Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to section 4.2, Solving Quadratic Equations by Graphing. Today's lesson is going to be a lot like yesterday's lesson, except today's lesson has a few more twists and turns. Now, we're going to start off with the vocab word, quadratic equations. Quadratic equations are just like quadratic functions, just from yesterday's stuff, but now they're set to a value, a value like 0 or an actual number. Remember, standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c, but now with uh, quadratic equations, it equals 0. a cannot be 0 because then it would not be quadratic equations. a, b, and c are all integers. They're all um, numbers. They're not fractions. So let's take a peek with what these problems are going to offer. So with number 1, we are asked to solve this guy equaling 3 by graphing. We are asked to solve. Well, now, notice how this equals 3. We always want these quadratic equations to equal 0 right now. So the very first thing we have to do is to subtract the 3 over to the other side. So we have x squared minus 2x minus 3, and that equals 0. So here is our equation. Now we go ahead and find our axis of symmetry. Now it's exactly the same as yesterday stuff. Remember, how do we find our axis of symmetry? Negative b over 2a. Well, what is our a? Our a is 1. Our b is negative 2. Plugging them in for our axis of symmetry, it's going to be a positive 2 because two negatives make a positive over 2 times 1. That makes 2 over 2, which makes 1. So here's our axis of symmetry. Our axis of symmetry is right at 1. So here is my axis symmetry as I put dots on 1. Now we need to find a point on this line. How do I find a point on this line? I plug 1 in for my x's, or sorry, in for these x's. So I get 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 3. That turns into 1 minus 2 minus 3, which gives me a negative 4. So I'm going to go on my axis symmetry. I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, and put a point. Still from yesterday's stuff. Now that I found this vertex, I found my vertex at 1, negative 4. Now I'm going to pick coordinates greater than or less than my axis symmetry. Since my axis symmetry was 1, I'm going to pick coordinate points 2 and 3, or points 2 and 3. Now I'm going to plug this 2 in for my equation right here. So I'm going to get 2 squared minus 2 times 2 minus 3, plug it all into my calculator, and I get a negative 3. So this y is going to be negative 3, again with the positive 3. I plug it in to my equation right here in the red, so it's going to be 3 squared minus 2 times 3 minus 3, and that's going to give me 0. So now I have y is 0. I'm going to graph these two points. So 2 down 3 and put a point. Then I go 3, 0 and put a point. Now remember, step 5 was we reflected the points. This one is on the axis symmetry, so I can't reflect that. Well, now I'm going to reflect this point across the axis symmetry and put it right there. And this point is 2 away, so I'm going to go 2 towards it, and then 2 away from it, and put a point. Now, does it open up or down? It opens up. Should my graph open up? Yes, because it is positive. So it opens up. And then let's go ahead and connect the dots. See how pretty my parabola will be. That side looks great. This side looks all right. And so now here's my parabola. What are my solutions now to this graph? We're looking for solutions. And solutions are going to occur where the graph intercepts the x-axis. So right here and right here. So this point on my x-axis is 3. So my solution would be 3. This point is negative 1. So my solutions to this graph, to this equation, is 3 and negative 1. 
So now, here are some final steps to solving a quadratic equation. First step, what did we do? We put it in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Second step, we drew the axis of symmetry where it's negative b over 2a, just like yesterday's. Then again, step three is just like yesterday's. We plugged the axis of symmetry into our equation, and then we chose two values less than or greater than the x-coordinate. We reflected the points over the axis of symmetry. Then we determined if it opened up or down, so then we could draw our parabola. And then the extra part here that we're working on today is how to find the roots or solutions of the graph and the solutions. So let's try one more. Here, now we're asked to find the zeros of this equation. Well, what are the zeros? The zeros are the roots and the solutions. Again, the zeros are the roots and the solutions. So it's exactly the same thing, and please make sure this goes in your notes. Zeros are the same thing as roots. Roots are the same thing as solutions. So if it asks you to find the roots, you would be finding the zeros or the solutions, or if it asks you to find the solutions, you would be also finding the roots and the zeros. Awesome, hopefully I can make that stop blinking. All right, step one well, was the very first thing that we had to do. We had to make sure that this equals zero. It does not equal zero, so let's subtract that 4x over. So we have x squared minus 4x plus 7 equals zero. Notice how I put that 4x between the x squared and the 7 just to put it in correct order. Next thing we have to do, point out our a. Our a is 1, our b is negative 4. Go ahead and put this in for the axis of symmetry. It's a negative 4, but a negative from the axis of symmetry, so it's just a positive 4 over 2 times 1, which gives me a 4 over 2, which gives me an axis of symmetry of 2. So my axis of symmetry here, using a nice pretty line, is right there. Now, I plug this 2, this 2, in for my equation. So, here's my equation. I'm going to go 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 7. Simplifying, remember it's four, or 2 squared, which is 4, minus 8 plus 7. That gives me 3. So, I'm going to go ahead and put 3 right on my axis symmetry. I have a vertex of... 2, 3. Our next step is to pick two points greater than or less than our axis of symmetry. I'm going to pick greater than, I'm going to pick 3, and I'm going to pick 4. I'm going to plug 3 in for this equation. So it is 3 squared minus 4 times 3 plus 7. That gives me a value of 4, so my y is going to be 4. And then I'm going to plug my x value in there. So it's going to be 4 squared minus 4 times 4 plus 7. That is going to give me a value of 7. So now I'm going to plot this coordinate point, 3, 4. So I go over 3, up 1, 2, 3, 4. Then I have 4, 7. So I go over 4, up 4, 5, 6, 7. Plot a point. Next thing we have to do for step 5 is to reflect the points. This point is one away, so I reflect it to it, and then one away from it, graph my point. This guy is two away, so I reflect two to it, two away from it, put a point. Now, does it open up or down? It opens up. Should it open up? Yes, because it is positive one, so it should open up. So let's do our best to connect the points. You will probably do better than I will. And so we are connecting the points, and that's probably my best looking graph that I've made so far. Now, uh, do we have any solutions? Do we have any zeros? Well, again, what are our zeros? They go through the x-intercept. Does it go through this x-intercept right here? It does not. It goes through the y, but it does not go through the x. So do we have any zeros? No, we do not. So we do not have any zeros. We have no solution for our zero. Now, numbers of solutions. We will get a different number of solutions on some problems. Well, now we have this parabola. It 
intercepts, or it intersects, sorry, the x-axis at two different spots, so we have two solutions. This, this graph goes through the x-intercept just once. So how many solutions would this graph have? That would have one solution. Does this graph go through the x-axis? No, it does not. So just like the previous example, this guy has no solution. What if we were asked to use a table to determine the location of the zeros or solutions or roots of the quadratic function? So here's my table. Say, for example, that this graph represents this table. Where would my zeros be? My zeros would be right here, right, where the graph crosses the x-axis. Now we want to focus on our y's right now. We're focusing on our y's. Down here, my y's are negative. But as I move up and I pass the x-axis, which is 0, it turns into positive. So then on my table, we want to look at where our y's are negative. Again, our y's are negative, and they turn to positive. So if I start in the middle of my table and work out, here it goes from negative to positive in this, in this section. But what are my x's? My x's are 5. Let's try that again, 5 to 6. So my solution, my solution would be what? Between 5 and 6, my x is of 5 and 6. And then how about the other way? It's still negative, negative. Here it turns to positive, negative 1 to 4, that's a positive. Then we have to look at our x's though for our solution, and it's between 0 and 1. So your solutions for this table would be between 5 and 6 and 0 and 1. And that does it for section 4.2, solve quadratic e equations by graphing. Good day.